Okay guys, in this video we're going to do it again. This time we're going to try and change the chassis on the fifth scale Creighton with the EXB chassis because this one came as an RTR, which means it has the shape chassis in it and it's made from lower grade aluminum. Now, we haven't done a large scale car with our cradle system and I want to know if it works and since we took this out you know since we did the last video we took this out some more and we beat it and the chassis did bend just a little bit if it bent a little eventually it's going to bend a lot so we want to see if the exp chassis is any stiffer if there are any modifications we have to make to it and whatnot so we're going to get down on the bench today now fear not we're not going to do a long drawn out version this is a quick abbreviated one if you want to see how the full thing's done Check out the EXB, it's the Creighton version 4 EXB RTR chassis swap. There will be a link in the video down below in the description to let you know where that one's at so you can check that out and see it in total. This one here is basically the same principle. We're going to get this thing down on the bench. We're going to yank all the screws out of the bottom of it once we build the cradle see if it holds everything properly and then put it back together and see if there are any tough spots anything that can be a problem or see if it goes nice and smooth and we'll get to find out if the exp chassis fits right on this car without any modifications so here we go guys check this out All right, here we go. This is the overall here. I want you to take a look at the cradle. Now this is rolled up towels and there's several in here. Make sure you tuck those up tight into the chassis so that it holds all of the internal components. You can roll these up any way you like. And this is the front end here and the rear end with the bumpers off. All the screws have been removed. It was simply taking them out, index them into the new chassis so you maintain where they go chassis off allows you to see how things are gets you a good look at it make sure you check to see if everything's clean along here and then take a vacuum cleaner and clean out any of the debris we want to go ahead and index all of the screws into the old chassis now so we don't lose their placement Now, while we have this open, let's go ahead and get some lubrication in here. Now, this is providing that things are clean. If they're not, you're going to have to get deeper, but this is in really good condition. So we'll go ahead and lube this stuff up. And now pre-fit the chassis. There we go. Everything seems to line up good. Put the old chassis in place so we know right where the screws go and start assembly by attaching the major components first. So we'll go for the rear end. And of course, you guys have heard me say this before, nice and slow with the power tools so you don't melt the threads in the plastic. There we go. Okay, all the little bits on the outside, just get make sure you get one screw in these to hold them in place. I like to get those on right away so that you don't have to fight them on later. There we go. Just get one in there to hold it in place and then we'll do the same thing for the other side. Go ahead and attach the front. Now it looks like I'm cranking these down, but I'm not. I'm just getting them down close. I'm gonna do I'm gonna tighten all this stuff by hand. And now just go after the major components, uh, speed control, battery trays, that type of thing, servo. Get those all started, get them all in line, and just be patient. You know, a little work in there to get things lined up. It's not a big deal. You can get your fingers in there to push things around a little bit if needs be. There we go. Now 
Now we're going after the rear chassis brace. That lined up real nice. Make sure you check everything. Get your alignment up. There we go. Nice and easy. Good. I'll go after the motor mount, transmission mount. Beautiful. Everything lined up real nice. Pretty straightforward stuff here. And this is way simpler than doing it the hard way where you take it all apart. This way you don't have to disassemble anything. You can just take the chassis off and put a new one right in place. I really wasn't sure how this was going to work on fifth scale, but you know, there's a lot of room in there, so that made it real easy. And we had a problem here with the battery tray. That one shifted. And this one's got a slider in there, so we got to get the slider back in place. There we go. And we're going to have to reach underneath now and position that so we can get our screws started. Perfect. Done. Okay, now we want to go ahead and reconnect the bumpers. And don't forget the two in the front. And then torque everything by hand. It seems like a pain in the in the neck, but it's not really. But you can definitely tell when you get things snug down and tight. Don't over tighten things here, guys. It's important that you get things down to where they feel nice and snug, but don't pull the threads out. There you go. Installation complete. Okay. Check the suspension, no binding. Just like that. Looking good. Now we did notice a problem here. And what it is, is as you look across here, you'll notice that there's a hole in the back right there. That is where the chassis brace connects, but it doesn't touch anymore because it's not a shaped chassis. So to overcome that, we wound up using shims. And it took a five count of shims to go ahead and reach that down so it would touch the chassis. That was a pretty simple fix. In the front here we had to do the same thing but there was no hole there so we had to drill and countersink to get that center one in plus the five shims. All right so there's the build for the EXB chassis. Now the stock chassis it actually held up pretty good overall, but if you watch the light across the top of this, see if I can do this, you can kind of see how it goes across it. And right here, it's a little bit dimpled. Now, that did leave about an eighth of an inch of gap between this point and the flat part of the chassis here. So this is bent a little bit. It wasn't bent enough to affect the ride of the vehicle, um, but since it was starting to bend, I knew that we were gonna have to do an upgrade for it. And that gave us this video. Now, that being said, the EXB chassis is just a little bit different. Now, it is pretty much the same overall. However, let's go ahead and set this back. However, this is a flat chassis here. There's no modeling. And what I mean by that is all of these embeds that are in the stock chassis, they figure that aluminum is tough enough. It doesn't have to have that. Plus, that 7075 is really hard to shape it's kind of almost too hard to bend. So this stuff here, it's a lot softer so they can stick it in a, a press and stamp this shape into it. Not so easy with the 7075. That being said, 
there are a couple of changes to this chassis that you have to do if you're pulling one of those off. And what that comes to is right here, there's a screw hole that goes through that little web brace that's on the inside, and that's in the tail section. Here's a look at it. That section right there has a raised section here. And what I mean is that connects right here. And see that raised area? That is five washers high. And I counted that out with the washers that I have. They're about the right size for what's going on. But I stacked five of them and it absorbed that really nicely. Check this out. That's what I had to do to get that piece to connect here. Also up front, there is a third screw that goes to the motor mount assembly. Now, that's that one's a little more questionable because the EXB chassis doesn't have a hole here for that. So it's dependent on two. I wasn't too thrilled with that idea, so I went ahead, drilled, and countersunk the chassis. And with five washers, I was able to space that out and get all three. So now on this one, it's one, two, three and it's got all the screws in it for the motor mount. Now, I'm not sure if the EXB just doesn't use those or not. I didn't look into it that deep, but I figured if the standard chassis needed three, I was gonna go ahead and do that. Otherwise, everything went together as it should have with the exception of one item. Underneath it, these trays, here, let's open this up. Okay, Ugh, bear with me guys. All right, so these battery trays right here, they're adjustable. So what that means is in the bottom, there's a little clamp that you can adjust from underneath. You loosen the screws, it allows you to size that for whatever size batteries you're gonna use. And when you do that, there's a little flat plate in there, it's about this long. And that loosens up, allows you to move the tray and then it tightens back down. When you put it on the cradle, that usually isn't gonna reach up and hold that little shoe. So when you take it all apart, yes, everything sat there okay, and I did get one to go right back in because I reached underneath and held it, but the other one I had to stand it up, put the box back together and start the screws. That's minor. Everything else as far as the transfer case, um, the radio box, servo, motor, everything else, lined right back up and I was able to bolt it right back together. So there you have it, that's the build and I think it was pretty successful. Um, we'll know more about it by the time the Brutal Review comes out, but for now, I'm glad we did it. Um, I've discovered that that cradle idea does work for all the different scales, as long as it's basically a flat pan chassis car that it can hold everything up. It was kind of nice to be able to just go ahead and take the chassis off, see all the components in place, be able to lube everything before you put it back together. And a little trick for you here on this, before you do this, um, as far as putting the new chassis on, make sure you drill and countersink that hole if you're gonna do that for the transmission. And when you put the chassis on, set it on there with the washers in place and start that one first. That will save you a whole bunch of trouble in the long run because I did it the other way around and they were bare to get in from the top side. So if you're gonna do that, check that out. Um, and also, you know, this car right here, right now this one's at the top of the pile for me. It's number one in my list and I couldn't be happier with it. I didn't think I was gonna like it. It's super fast, it's super rugged, it's durable, and it's a lot of fun to play with. That being said, hey guys, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. That is an important one, share, and don't forget that notification bell to stay informed. You know, we try to come up with cool stuff for you guys to check out. This is one I knew I wanted to try, and I'm glad we actually had the opportunity. If you guys have any modifications that you've done to your Creighton 8S, something that is a trick or a tip that can help others, please feel free to leave it in the comments down below and help others along the way. Hey guys, I'm AJ with AJ Jam Studios saying, keep wrenching guys.